The views and opinions expressed on From the Mouths of Madness are that of the panel and not of the Geeks Under the Influence Network or their sponsors. Amazon.com and TeePublic.com. Listeners, beware. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I am one of the hosts, Lowdown. With me, as always, is... F you, Honor. What's up, you rebooted bitches? Requel, bitches. Oh, requel. Requel. Mm, Get yeah, it straight. I guess if there could be somebody to explain this in detail. Oh, don't to worry. Me, that'd be great. We're going to... We're totally going to... Oh, totally good, explain good, to you. good, good. Me, okay. Get, let me get through the intro. All right, all right. And I'll, and I'll break it down for you. I got right. you, bro. I got you. God, yeah, they're creating shit that makes old school horror fans feel like fucking newbies. Anyway. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Haven't, heard, haven't talked to you for a while. Hope you rocked it in right and yeah, yeah, right, nice and bloody, gory, supernatural, whatever, <laughs> elevated. I guess is the new term that was introduced in this film. It, it, elevated yeah. horror. Uh, I yeah, uh, I was like, All what right. the fuck? So tonight, I mean, I'm pulling up my my uh, Urban Dictionary to make sure verify <laughs> some of this. It's tonight oh, on the chopping block is 2022's Scream. And I'm gonna get, go ahead and say Scream Five. That, yeah, we're, Scream we're, Five. We're gonna say Scream Five. Scream Five. Yeah. It's like. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they they the very intro to the movie where they basically just you know I mean they done they did this through the course of m- every one of them but two I feel like where was it the house the house kill yeah uh, no, no no two is the theater two, where they're saying, watching all of them but yeah two. yeah where they're where they're so, sort of because you're watching it four and, they did the movie and the movie and the movie yeah right yeah 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 four yeah. is like I I lost track it's of how many times fuck, and <laughs> yeah. three uh, and three was like. In in a house, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So two was the only one in the theater. Um, but three anyway. had the biggest tits uh, intro. Is that is that right? Three? Yeah. Did it? I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe I'm getting a mix There's up with four. There's a lot of tits in the... A lot of big tits we never see in the fucking movie. Or maybe I'm getting scary movie mixed up. Yeah. I can't remember, <laughs> man. Shit. Oh, uh, there was no jizz in a freezer in any of these movies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was... Anyway. Anyway, um, you know, this movie started out... Like all the other screams, which I was fine with, but the th- the addition of the smart features was really fucking cool. I will say that that was fucking and because cool. you have the you know one of every twenty houses that still has a house phone. Yeah, so. right. yeah, I, I was like, who the fuck has a house? phone? But incorporating Jesus. that into the text message with her friend, you know, so that was that was fun. And then I will say, doors that. armed. Yep, doors lo- you know, doors locked, doors unlocked, doors locked. I, I mean, I know they gave that away in the trailer, it, that but it was really cool. That smart feature kind of fucked, yeah, fucked her up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that was solid. I mean, so the intro in the movie was was great. So that it started off good. Started off good. Um, but I will say this. I mean, we're not doing Do we have to do a fucking spoiler? We're not oh, doing, yeah, spoilers. Yeah. Fucking yeah. spoilers. Well, nothing we've said so far spoiled anything because the door lock thing, like I said, was in the right. trailer. You haven't spoiled anything. All right, now let's get to- Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler. Here's the first- Fucking spoiler. Here's the first weird thing. Chick that gets attacked doesn't fucking die. Yeah, she's the only survivor of the first yeah, kill. That's she's li- only survivor of the first attack. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Oh. She's supposed to fucking die. Well, apparently yeah. not. But that's because the plot thickens. Oh, you gotta yeah. keep her alive oh, so you can bring the older sister in. Oh, so the, old, old man. the older sister, uh, a Sam Carpenter. Yep. Dude, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta give the writers and obviously OG Wes Craven props like the biggest franchise that he gives props to in all these screen movies is fucking halloween yeah like Wes craven's like no john carpenter you did it before me yay <laughs> like but it's weird because craven did put out last house on the left like that was the same no that was a couple years before halloween yeah so i, I okay because hills of the vibes was 78 i believe or 79 it was, it was still in the 70s yeah but house last house on the left would have been earlier and Halloween had come out in 78. So it's weird that he's just only giving homages to Halloween. Because Billy Loomis. I maybe just kind of recognize. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Dude, I'm, when I watch those movies, I look for that shit because that's their bread and butter. Yeah. Is the fucking throwbacks, the call outs, you know, the cameo. I mean, honestly, of all the screen movies, my, my favorite call out will always be literally Wes Craven dressed as a janitor with a sweater. Go, <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 sorry, Fred. Like, <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> um,. So this film was directed by Matt Bettinelli Olpin. Yeah, I, I got that right. And Tyler Gillette. And it was also written by Guy Busick 
and James Vanderbilt. And yes, he is of the Vanderbilts of New York. Okay. Of the OG fucking families that built this fucking country. Built the city. But not, but not with rock and roll. No. Okay. <laughs> no, the rock and roll. No, that's crazy. Like, what's a Vanderbilt doing in horror? Because you got, I mean, look, at you got the Carnegie's, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt's. Those guys were the money behind building America. Yeah. It's just weird to see the name attached to the, a, a, a and movie. now they're destroying franchise. Okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah, because he was one of the writers. But the <laughs> cool thing is that out of the three, Sans Vanderbilt, those other three worked together in the same capacity on Ready or Not. Yep. The two, the same two people directed it, and Guy was one of the writers. There was another writer. I forget what his Man, name was. But Ready or Not, such a fucking fun, it is a fun, fun movie. movie. And go back and listen to our episode. That was like our second or third yeah, was on the topic early. block yeah, in 2020. Early ones. So yeah. definitely go back and check that episode out. It's, it's a fun movie. Boy, what a, what a fun, fun movie. Now let's get back to this movie. Oh God! <laughs> so, so this this does happen twenty five years later. Twenty five years later. Okay. Um. And yeah. So Tara is the one who gets attacked in the beginning of the movie. Uh, her si- older sister Sam gets notified about the attack, and then you meet her boyfriend, who that guy I forget the actor's name, but he's from the boys. Yep. Does awesome. Oh yeah. He does awesome in the movie. I think he carried it pretty well. <laughs> like. He's he's definitely kind of the comic relief, kind of the Stu. He's definitely character. Stu-ish, yeah, but Stu-ish. not quite as pussy as Stu. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not right. as much. He's more logic. He's like the logical side of Stu, less pussy side. of Well, Stu. he's the one that kind of points out, like, should we really go Is, here? A fucking party should in we, the house? Yeah. Should we go? Should, do we, no, fuck that. I mean, literally, he's like, um, so I'm gonna go down to the basement. I'll be right back. Oh, well, never mind. Like he's yeah. When he shows that up the character party at that the realizes end. all the shit he's saying, yeah. When he shows up the party at the end, and either clearing out the house is like, "Yep, yeah, no, I mean, you guys are the serial killer running around. You guys are literally having a house party. Uh, leave, yeah. like, just, just get the fuck out." So, so, I mean, I don't even know where to go with this, man. Let's just, all right, let's just fuck it. All right, all right, I'm taking the gloves off already, but uh, all right. So, yeah. what their objective with this was is that. We're now so many years past OG Scream mm-hmm. that let's start bringing family members that are grown up related to original people from the first movie, you know, and our big, big reveal. Oh, yeah. Sam is Billy Loomis's daughter. Yeah. Apparently, li- Sam's mom got it on with Billy right before I was going to say, Billy was like, apparently fucking some other chick. And was like, yeah. but so she's he, not a virgin. So we, so he, uh, yeah, exactly. So he went and filled <laughs> greedy up, motherfucker. He went up and filled <laughs> Sam's mom, and then went and climbed up into the terrace to get to. Well, because I'm guessing, like, <laughs> he, he kind of got off on the challenge, and obviously, you know, Sam's mom was just like, you know, open for business, you know, because you know she was no Sharon Stone, but in the same instance, she's no Sharon Stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is where the podcast. There's no visual for me to show with the hand motions. Yeah, but. I think he Billy liked the like challenge of Sydney. Plus, obviously, he had a bit of a connection, so he he really wanted to like you know what before I kill her, I want to fuck her. So yeah, yeah, you know, and, and success. But yeah, he, success. he had a lot of time on his hands, apparently. And uh, which is weird, the other chick wasn't a suspect of any of this in the first movie. That no. not even a men- not even a mention. No, nope. like no, nope. yeah. well, it's twenty five years and it's been wide open. So there you go. And they, you know, I mean, okay, so then it all unfolds like every other screen movie. Uh, they contact the first person they contact that's re- that's even involved is Dewey, and him and Gail have gotten divorced, and he's Dewey, living in a trailer, and, and it's just, and then he like calls Sid and like tells her not to come. She's like, no, fuck no, I'm not coming. And then, oh my god, and then text Gail Weathers, <laughs> text <laughs> yeah. Gail Weathers, Ghostface is back. Yeah, don't come, don't come. I'm like, R- really. That's that's really you were the sheriff of Woodsboro the last time we saw you and you're texting your ex-wife because you're scurred to me. It feels like this one had more of an impact, but we already had Scream 4 that brought all the characters back after a bit of a time gap. Mm -hmm. So this is just another time gap and the characters are back. It's just a retread of four. But because four was like technically a, a mock remake. Yeah. See. Yeah. And this is the requel. So, okay. 
They, all right, let's get into this. They have a powwow. This. All the teens have a powwow. And oh, yeah, we got to mention we're introduced to all, all the friends new, all of- All the new characters, uh, Tara and- yeah. Uh, yeah, Tara's friends. Yeah, Tara's and friends. And they're all suspects, you know, because it could be anybody. And, and they, they lay heavy on the same stuff they laid on four, except they lay it on even heavier. Like, we got to lay, lay it on with, like, say, like, butter on toast and four. This is, like, five fucking layers of peanut butter. Yeah. Just whack them. This is, like- Oh wow! How much like the first movie times the first movie? <laughs> how about the first movie? movie. Yeah, and oh, do you remember and the first movie? Remember the first movie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, In- including shitty soundtrack. What I loved about Halloween 2018, I don't know how all of a sudden I'm going to bring this up, is that it it said okay the first movie is here and we're going to have the beats, but we're moving on. We we reference the first movie, mm-hmm. but it's a continuation, and this movie goes. We're going to reference the first movie, and we're going to show you stuff from the first movie. Do you remember the first movie? We really want you to remember the first movie. And like, and it hits you over the head of just the references, the person sitting on the couch, watching the movie of the movie. But this time, watching Stab instead one, of yeah. watching Halloween, Stab she's one. watching Stab 1. It just and look, over I, the fucking top, I think, dude. I think the writers and the directors are trying... To capture that magic from Scream, but again, Scream was like a lightning in a bottle effect. Yeah, where Scream took a, the first Scream took a while for people to, for the general, I think, uh, public to, or the general horror fan, excuse me, not the general public, the general horror fan, to latch on more to it. Like I, I remember enjoying it, but I didn't really appreciate what Craven was doing with the, the tongue in cheek the entire movie. They're, re- I feel like they're really trying to do that with this movie because of all the sequels that have come out that uh, that just negate the entire franchise. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's been really popular lately, and I think that they were really trying to make fun of that, but I, it just, it, it was now, so... I'll tell you... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because by them watching the original, but they're watching Stab and are mimicking all the scenes, that's the only thing I can I, that makes sense to me is they're trying to redo the first I'll t- movie I'll t- while I'll also make a sequel. I'll throw this out there. I'll tell you why, what my biggest, my, my issues with this movie is that... um the characters in this movie fucking suck. Yes, the and there terrible. have been other screen movies where most of the characters, besides the first one, Three. suck ass. But you know what? This one was fucking boring. Very boring. You didn't fucking care, and you spent like twenty minutes. And you know, we watched this together. Yeah. And I looked over. I was like, "What the fuck, dude? Where do we get some kills? And like the kills were all boring and the same. There was like have... one good. Ki- okay, there was one really awesome kill. One." With Dewey. Yeah. But that wasn't like anything extravagant. It was just double stab, slice up. Yeah. Like, and, and, and I say that in, revel- in relation to the other stab movies where we had, you know, a garage door. We had two disembowelments in the beginning of the first fucking movie. I didn't see any guts in this movie. No. There's no guts. And here's the thing with the Dewey one, now that I overthink it, because we get a reveal. Again, we've said the spoiler thing, so I, I don't give a shit at this point. Your two main killers, you've got the okay. boyfriend- and one of the teenage girls. Dewey's kill is by the teenage girl who lifts him up with both knives, belly up. Yeah, because the boyfriend is with them. That's one strong teenage girl. Her because if you ass. paint it, but you know what I'm saying, if you painted it as the boyfriend, okay. But you have to establish because he's with his girlfriend. He got stabbed. Yeah, oh, so, okay, he hit so me. you know it's yeah. not him. The only other killer, killer is the teenage girl. So that's one strong bitch to fucking knife front knife back lift up no yeah no then i started to have a problem with that no yeah that 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 was bad because let's uh, that girl ain't lifting shit exactly that girl ain't lifting she's tiny yeah <laughs> unless she got like superhuman strength she's tiny so the kills were boring it was literally it was just like stab 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 stab, stab, hey, look, stab. look the old uh the the old house that was the first movie took oh place yeah in. that's the, that big thing the party that they threw it in was where the one of the killers apparently lived, and it was Stu's old house. Again, you're trying too hard. You're trying too hard. And th- that I remember you cut to the party, you go in there, and I was like, there is something a little familiar. And then you get your bad guy monologuing that, oh, we set this all up. We even got the fucking house, Stu's house. Yeah. We bought it, and we got it, and we set this all up. Yeah. So Because they hated... Stab seven or eight? Which one was it? Stab eight. Yeah. I think it was the last. So they wanted to inspire to get a re, you say it, 
Requel. Requel. Thank so let's, you. All right, we, we. I haven't actually stopped explaining it for those. <laughs> well, if you've watched, if you listen to this and you've seen the movie because you care about spoilers, then you already know. But if you don't care about spoilers and you're listening anyway, um, a requel is something that continues the story, like a sequel, but also revisits familiar tropes so much so that is as much a remake as it is a sequel. Plus, yeah, like it does. Like we've said, it's one of those where it doesn't acknowledge the other sequels besides the OG, right? No, it only acknowledges really one. Yeah, well, that, that, that's one, what yeah. I'm saying is that disregards everything Scream but, two, but Scream the original. Three, yeah, nothing yeah. like City never had a long lost brother or any of oh, that God, shit. God, God, oh never, man, <laughs> never had, oh. a, never had like a niece that wanted to. Yeah, dude, I'm telling oh, you, like, it was God like, damn it, because it was it was like 25 years after the first Scream. You murder. know what saves this movie? I'll just throw it out there. You know what saves this movie? And you just reminded me, fucking Scream Three. What saves me from going the fuck off? On this movie completely is Scream 3. Yeah, yeah. I have been to hell. This is on the way down to it, but Scream 3 is the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. So, yeah. But this is not that far from no, it. No, no. It, if it's, it's not for close. the Dewey kill, it's not for incorporating some of modern stuff in that first opening sequence. And the actor plates too. He pretty much, I, I, yeah. I was saying he carried. Yeah. I feel like he carried uh, fucking. Courtney Cox looking like goddamn Skeletor in this fucking film. Yeah. Holy shit. What yeah, the that was, fuck was uh, that? Yeah, they're, so, they're, like, I'd, I think I'd rather watch Scream 3 and see her look good with those bad head, bangs. Bad head haircut, yeah. Versus how she looked in this movie. Yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> you just have Scream 4. And yeah. that's the thing with this Scream movie. Scream 4 was solid, dude. But that's the thing with this movie. It's not needed. No, it You kind of closed the book with 4. That's all you needed. And this one went... Yeah, but we really meant to kill Dewey in four. So the, all this movie is is okay. We killed one of the other main characters. It only Dewey took. Dewey finally few... got killed because he'd been stabbed in every fucking movie. I mean, yeah. When you add it up, he survived what twenty plus stabbings, roughly. Is he stabbed in every one of these? He is literally stabbed in every one of the fucking movies. Every one of them. And oh, how did he die? In oh, this two one? stabs. Two. He never well, been stabbed. Saying, He's never been stabbed by two knives simultaneously. Yeah, that was the thing. That's, That's where what got him. They should have had a moment where he just turns, looks at the camera, goes. This is ironic, you know, like as he's being lifted with the See, fucking that knife. Would perfect, that would have been a perfect time for a gut shot. Yeah. His guts totally would have fallen out with those that double stabbing. There, I will say there is one kill. It's so, so simple, but I call it Got Your Neck, which is they introduce a throwaway character at this bar that he goes out to his car. This radio is playing. Taking a piss, yeah. Oh, uh, that was the actor from the other shitty fucking 2010 remake, fucking... Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep, he was the one of the main. He was like he ended up being like the main final guy. Yeah, with the Nancy. You remember? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was those. But they made that him went, like yeah. the redneck scumbag yeah, he who gave, like, has a, a Trans Am or whatever. Yeah. But he's going to take a <laughs> piss. In the bandit. Woo! And now I will say this was kind of a cool callback. His car gets turned on and the radio is playing. And it's playing the fucking Nick Cave song. Yeah. from the fucking OG. Red right hand. Yeah. Yeah. And he but goes they, over they to investigate it, movie. and you think it's going to be this dramatic thing, but no, pretty much Ghostface, or, uh, Ghostface comes up right behind him, and quick stab to the neck, and just walks away, almost like a bug bite. Like, ah, you're dead. Yeah, it was very <laughs> It was so quick. <laughs> like, literally, he's looking at the car, and then Ghostface pops up, and you're like, oh, and then he's like, pop up. All right, good, bye-bye. Done. Yeah, Red Red Hand, play, as as in all the Scream movies, uh, plays predominantly throughout the film. You get a lot of the mu- the mu- the scores. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of nostalgia in the film, like you know the Dewey score, the mm-hmm. doom, 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 down, down, doom, yeah, doom, yeah. Like there's so the scores kind of throw on some nostalgia there. And I, I, I mean, I don't know about our li- you listeners, but uh, huge Nick K fans here. So yeah, I mean, anytime I hear Red Right Hand, I mean they've used it in Peaky Blinders. They've used it in so many fucking movies that like yeah. They had such an opportunity, and they slightly. And it's the interaction at the beginning of the movie again to kind of make a statement on horror movies now. And they started to lean a little bit. He like he's like, "What's your favorite scary movie?" And she's like, "The Babadook," which is kind of that's where the elevated horror conversation comes. Right, from. right. But they just that was it, really. And honestly, I don't that was that was about it. Who? who all right, I'm a, I love the Babadook. I thought it was an amazing movie. I love most. I love Jordan Peele's movies. I love Aaron Eggers. I love. Um, uh, fuck, who's he? Uh, Ari Aster. Yeah. I love all this elevated horror shit. A24 has crushed it with so many, releasing so many films, right? I don't know anybody whose favorite horror film is The Baba Duke, though. Well, she's a teenager. Who knows? Like, again, she she mentions, like, you know, that she remembers seeing Stab at a, like in a sleepover or like that. But to her, 
that's like the most recent like horror movie that caught on. So gotcha. Well, so she's a teenager. Like I can't I can't so yell they, too they much did, because they just they just, tra- they just trans- uh, transformed it over or uh, transported it over to like. You know Drew Barrymore's character in the first screen where the they had to go back to Friday Thirteenth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes okay. That makes sense. So but I still thought yeah. they had an opportunity to make more statements on horror movies because as you go through the original scream, you get references, the rules of you know horror movie of you know horror movies, things like that. This one, it's just repeating, regurgitating. Yeah. You didn't get a good jump on what you could play with from where horror movies have gone from the original scream. I mean the last. 11 years? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Scream 2, though, jumps all over sequels and how sequels fuck it up or whatever like that. This one, just a slight mention, and that's it. Yeah. And I, I agree. Like, they could have really done something more with this, yeah, with with this film as far as there's a lot that's when, happening again, in horror. When, when in the you talk 2010s. about the people involved in it, again, mm-hmm. Ray or Not has so much fun. Mm-hmm. This movie, it's not, no, it's no fun. It's no. fucking boring. It's no fun. The kills no pretty fun. much suck ass. And it's it's longer than it should be. So you could have had at least some good dialogue about statements on more of the how horror movies have evolved. No, no, we'll just go into you know Billy Loomis's daughter seeing him, oh. a la True Romance, where dude talks to Elvis, Elvis. brother. That's Billy Loomis. Talk about but how he's covered in Scream. Was. Yeah, Scream One, blood, white shirt, and it's just advice like. Hey, you know, you should really do this. You're my daughter. Yeah, God damn I it. I want to see you. Yeah. Fuck the, God damn like, it. And at the very end, oh. she has to, she looks at the mirror and sees a vision of him and he's like, it's okay. This Kill movie him. is so, Kill him. it's, like, this movie, fuck? it's a good thing there's a Scream 3 out there because, yes. Otherwise, this would be the bottom of the barrel. This would be the this bottom. Be, and if Scream 3 was good, this would be the bottom of the barrel. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, but no, that's the like, saving when thing. When she looks at him for confirmation and the, at the last scene to, when he, when she kills her, the, the boyfriend at that point. I'm like, really? Really? Now, she did. I will say, it does kind of bring out, like, you know, I'm the child of a serial killer because she stabs the fuck out of Like, she had to stab him, what, 20 times? Just that was bam, 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 bam. I, I enjoyed that. I like that. I enjoyed yeah. that. I will and say fuck that. Him. But fuck at that him. point, you know what? It's too little. Too, we're so burnt out by the time that happens. We're like, is the movie over? The like, fucking. Now, I will say it has the same runtime as all the other four movies. All the other four it? movies were like, Around one forty-five, one fifty to two hours. That's like the average. So within fi- why plus, does this one minutes, feel so much longer? It's so much longer. Yeah, because I, I, I just rewatched uh, uh, two. I, I watched one not too long ago, so I rewatched two, three, and four. And yeah, I've never watched three again. Um, like I don't need to watch. I never need to watch a movie again. But I was looking at the run times, and it's like one fifteen, one seventeen, one twenty. And this movie was one twenty. It was like right wow. at like two hours. I yeah, would have thought this movie was thirty minutes longer than any of the other nope. ones. Same length, God same. Fu- because we said the same thing. We're like, why is this movie so long? <laughs> Fuck. Because you get these parts where Sam's talking to her sister and these long. The dry man, how out- is our fucking final girl such a bad actress? Terrible. She Terrible. Was horrible. But I mean, that's she, like, she, had, she had a little Mar- uh, was it Miranda Baccarat look yeah. going for with the the sultry, sexy eyes. I mean, every, every, uh, I hope listen. I hope Luckily, you watch Firefly because. God damn. Yeah. But she, her acting is fucking atrocious. Why do you think they brought in the dude from The Boys to be her boyfriend to counter react the shitty acting where then you go, oh, she's terrible. But you know what? He's all right. Like, he, like that's why he's with her in most scenes yeah. to fix now, that shit. Now, the actress that played her sister was pretty solid. Tara was pretty, was okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Sam was, that actress, I'm sorry, like, what? Oh. There was several like that. One of the friends, the uh, oh, the t- both the twins were fucking annoying. Uh, yeah, both the fucking twins were annoying. I mean, that's the thing is, it's like all the groups of friends they picked people that were really bad actors because nobody, I, nobody did a good job in this. Like no. the group of friends. I mean, the the OG the, cast did good. The slutty friend that just literally gets shot in the head. You know, the one that wants to fuck yeah. literally. I was I was kind of cheering when she got shot in the head because I was like, good, I don't have to hear her fucking just step all over the lines anymore. But no, it was like this. But I would say this is the first time we saw a character literally turn down pussy because like you could be the killer. Yeah. Like, I, 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 uh, I, what? <sighs> no. Okay. That was a new one on me. 
Also, I would have dicked the fuck out of her. Yeah, Just that's saying, the thing. I would have like, dicked the shit out of you her. You know what? Grab a knife from the kitchen, put it on the pillow, and say, let's fuck. I mean, like, yeah. it's, it doesn't seem that hard. It was make you feel safer here. Yeah. Like, just, she was, ah. Yeah. <laughs> she was literally on your junk, bro. He's like, I don't know about this. Like, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. know about this. You're just being fucking stupid. You're being fucking stupid, exactly. And then you but die then, without fucking. But then fucking literally her. he's like, no, no, it doesn't seem safe. Let's go into a room and just fucking because you could be the killer. But then literally he's like, but. Um, I'll go okay, you're upset with me. And look yeah, for let me go through the bushes. the bushes. Yeah, again, Fucking where this idiot. movie just doesn't know what it's doing. It's like, yeah, I'm not gonna go over in a room with you, but I'll go outside with nobody else around me. That should be safe. And I do wonder. This was supposed to come out like a year sooner. Yeah. And I brought the, I brought the, I brought this up on a couple other movies last year. Was I wonder if this fell to reshoots or anything like that, which I haven't read any information on. Because it sat on a shelf for so long, and probably, you know, like I said, if you have some, if you have too much, if you have something that was slated to be dropped at a certain time, and you you filmed under that timeline, and then something happens where it shelves it for a year, I mean, do you go back over it and start and start, you know, kind of obsessing over it? I don't know. Yeah, I want to give them credit for something because four was so good, but it was also still Wes. That was still Wes Craven. Yeah, that was still Wes. Last, last Wes. But Wes also did three. Look, yeah, that all, was still West. We, we all need money yeah, sometimes. Carpenter's got the uh, Mars fucking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. No, Carpenter's got a few. I mean, Memoirs of Invisible Man. Like, there's a oh, few there. Yeah. 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 So the, look, they they have more home runs than they have uh, foul Fingers. outs, <laughs> but they yeah. still have a few fouls. All right. Still got a few funkies. Still and got Scream a few Three funkies. is the fouls. Of the fouls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So another big thing is Gail finally learned her lesson in her old age. Of 120, um, <laughs> that that she can't stop eating. Oh wait, sorry, I got her mixed up with Skeletor for some reason. I don't know how that happened. No, she drops a knowledge bomb and says, "Next time, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll um, get you, Ghostface." <laughs> <laughs> Blast it! Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, that's my Dewey. <laughs> God. No, what I meant was she didn't. She decided. Which she actually already learned in three or four. She learned in four. She decided not to write about the word Woodsboro murders again and instead do a, a bio book on Dewey. And I'm like, that was a big revelation, apparently. 